Hello, and welcome to Office Hours. I'm Mike Stevenson, Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs at Sam Houston State University, and I thank you for joining me. One of the opportunities I have as Provost is to elevate our faculty. I like to share the Sam story, particularly when I have the opportunity to talk about the outstanding experiences that our students get in the classroom with our faculty. Office Hours is an opportunity to showcase some of the best and the brightest teacher scholars right here on our campus. Today, I'm visiting with Dr. Jose Santiago. Originally from Puerto Rico, Dr. Santiago is professor of kinesiology at SAM. He joined SAM Houston State in 2009 after completing his doctorate at Texas Southern University in Houston. Dr. Santiago is starting his 15th year of instruction at SAM. He served as the women's volleyball assistant coach at Rice University for five years, and then as an elementary health and PE teacher for eight years, all prior to his time at SAM. In terms of awards and accolades, Dr. Santiago won the SHSU College of Health Sciences Outstanding Award in Teaching in 2021 and the SHSU College of Education Outstanding Award in Teaching in 2013, just four years after arriving at SAM. Dr. Santiago, welcome to Office Hours. Thank you, Brother Stevenson. It's my greatest pleasure and honor to be here with you today. Absolutely. Uh, specifically when there are so many great teachers in this institution. So I am extremely, extremely humbled by the opportunity that you have given me. I'm really glad you're here. Tell us about what uh, really you. inspired you to be in the college classroom. Um, well, uh, my experiences has evolved during my career. Uh, first of all, my mother was a, a third grade elementary teacher, which was the first, my first teacher ever. Mm -hmm. Then as, as, as I went through the uh, elementary school years, I was um, lucky and honored to, to be with great teachers. Uh, specifically with a physical education teacher. His name is Pedro Negron, and he actually was my role model. After that, as I continued my education, uh, went through high school and uh, went to the University of Puerto Rico, I uh, uh, had great professors, and one of them, Dr. Julio Morales, who actually influenced me tremendously. Um, that's exactly why I wanted to be, I wanted to be like him. And I saw him how he taught, and that's exactly what I, uh, I wanted to be. I wanted to be a college professor. It didn't work the way I wanted at the very beginning, mm -hmm. but uh, those uh, people were the most influential in my uh, career as a teacher. What a wonderful yeah. story. Those are great influences to have on, on your teaching. Abs absolutely. Tell us what a typical day in your classroom would look like. Um, the way I approach teaching is uh, quite uh, with the most respect. I, uh, I think that uh, my job as a, as a teacher is to change behavior in our students. A typical day in my classroom, I do a, a daily review from previous, uh, previous lectures or previous uh, uh, courses or mm -hmm. previous uh, classes. Um, what, whenever I am going to introduce a new subject or a new material, I try to, to break it in a small chunks so that it's easy for students to comprehend. I also do a lot of questioning in my classroom. Uh, my students are always uh, are asking me, why are you asking so many questions? And it's just to check for understanding. Um, that's some of the, of, of the typical uh, things that you will see in my classroom. You will also see uh, students working uh, together in groups, uh, maybe in pairs. I also give a lot of choices to the students. Um, and then I, at the end of the, of the classroom, at the end of the lecture or the lesson, I typically uh, do a, another review. I do a lot of review and repetition, specifically when it comes to what is going to be on the assessment, on the formative assessment or the summative assessment, depending on what I'm assessing. So you will see a lot of review and repetition of the material so that my students understand. Um, a lot of scaffolding as well, in terms of uh, if there are difficult tasks, um, you will also see students working independently and guided with me. Mm -hmm. So those are my typical, my typical days. Um, when we work in the, in the gym, because my uh, area is uh, teaching future physical education teachers, our students are, are teaching. They do a lot of peer teaching. They are the ones that are planning. They learn how to plan in the classroom, and then they implement those plans with their own peers. They also, they, uh, b besides being uh, teachers, they also serve as a student observant. And that way they, they learn from each other a lot and they give each other feedback. 
So those are some of my typical uh, classroom uh, routines. And how are you engaging technology now that we've got a generation that grew up on technology almost completely? I see technology as uh, it has a, a purpose and it has to be used um, use as a as a tool to accomplish the objective of the of the of the course mm -hmm. um, i don't use technology just because the sake of it but um how i how i use technology is by um for example some of my assignments include um video recording when they go to the schools they have to video record themselves mm -hmm. and they have to complete forms uh, to self-evaluate their their teaching uh, another way that I use technology is, for example, when we uh, work together in groups, they use the Microsoft Teams a lot so that they can collaborate and they, uh, because they develop lesson plans, they review and edit those lesson plans over time. And that's a way that I use technology within the classroom. Outside the classroom, um, I, we have an, ex uh, an assignment that is about assessing fitness uh, of students in schools. So we have a software that they have to use and complete and develop uh, input data for students as well as develop reports that they can use to give the students at the schools and parents as well. So there are some of the technology that I infused. Uh, I also uh, teach my students how to use uh, step counters or what we call pedometers so that they can use that with students uh, when they get to the schools. And uh, I also um, I use a lot of uh, cell phones in class um, so that they can use the record so that they can use that as a self-assessment for students as well. That's yeah. great. Well, you describe yourself as a physical education teacher educator. Can you say more about that? Absolutely. I consider myself a teacher educator first. Um, I value research mm -hmm. uh, quite a bit. I love engaging it, but I think that my biggest influence is on preparing good teachers. And that's where I come with the expression, I'm a physical educator, teacher educator first. I, my biggest responsibility here um, is that I want to prepare good future physical education teachers with the skills, knowledge, and professional dispositions to be successful in, in the classroom when they get to it. Speaking of engagement, in 2018, uh, 2014 rather, you won the David Payne Award for Academic Community Engagement. And then in 2018, you won a Teaching Innovation Award to develop an after-school program for students with disabilities in our community. Tell us a little bit more about why engagement is so important in the community. Uh, it's very important to mention that uh, I was introduced to academic community engagement by our, our good colleague, Dr. Joyce McCauley, when I came here to SAM in fall of 2009. Um, I learned a lot through, through her. And uh, so when, when she introduced me to the idea in fall of 2009, the first thing I did, okay, this I'm going to jump into this and I'm going to run with it. So the first thing I did, I went to uh, Huntsville Independent School District and uh, meet with, with the special education uh, department. And we created uh, one of the uh, most uh, rewarding uh, community engagement activities and longest in this institution, which is uh, we serve the students with disabilities from uh, Huntsville Independent School District. Why so important? Because I think it is we, we, we like to feed two birds with one piece of bread, right? We help our students get hands-on experiences, practice the, the theoretical aspect that we teach in the course, practice with uh, the real students, with real kids or children, and then we also serve the needs of the community that is so important. Last question, and I like to ask this of everybody that I talk with, what is one thing the SAM students have taught you? Many things. Uh, if I have to pick a few of the skills that I have become a better teacher because of my students. Uh, I'm, I'm not the same teacher that I was in fall of 2009 today. And it's because of my students and many of the uh, professional conversations that I have with my colleagues. But if I have to pick a few skills that I, they have taught me is caring and empathy. Our, our students go through many struggles. They have to pay for their education. They, they have to work for their education. Many come from lack of background experiences, just like I was mm -hmm. when I came to the US. 
And I can relate to that very much. So if I have to pick, it's caring. Dr. Santiago, it has been an honor and a pleasure to visit with you today. Thank you for all you do in the classroom and Thank all you, you do for Sam Houston State University. And uh, I appreciate your time today. Thank you, Provost Stevenson. That concludes, My pleasure. Thank you. And that concludes today's office hours. Thank you for joining us.